is crazy important. You always hear people talk about their hormones and hormonal acne and hormonal skin conditions. Well, all skin conditions, like all conditions, like all health conditions, have an aspect of hormone, of, uh, of uh, hormonal health. Now, the hormones, the endocrine hormones are secreted out of major glands. We've talked about these, in the, talked about this last week. The, the fundamental gland in the body is the adrenal glands. This is our survival glands. This is what gets us out of a jam. It's the most important when it comes to survival. The most important gland is the adrenal glands. And the link between the skin and the adrenal glands is super, super important. It can be said that the skin is actually a satellite of the adrenal glands. Believe it or not, the skin is actually a gland itself, and it actually is almost like the adrenal glands. It makes adrenal hormones. All the sex hormones are made in the skin. Cortisol is made in the skin. Stress and sex and fertility hormones all are made in the skin. I've been in the skincare business now for 32 years, and I could tell you that what we put on top of our skin matters way, way, way less than what is happening inside of our body, especially when it has to do with the stress response. The link between the stress response and beauty and wrinkles and acne and hyperpigmentation, all the skin issues you can name, the link between the stress response and what shows up on our skin must not be underestimated. In this way, the best wrinkle cream there is, is your adrenal hormones. And the best wrinkle causing substances are your adrenal hormones. If you're making adrenal hormones associated with stress, i.e. cortisol and aldosterone, which we've talked about, you're wrinkling. And you can put all the wrinkle cream on top of your skin you want, you're still gonna wrinkle. On the other hand, if you're leading a peaceful, calm life, with a little bit of activity and action, you're gonna be secreting estrogen and testosterone and DHEA and pregnenolone, all the good stuff, and your skin is gonna reflect that. Beautiful, healthy skin is a reflection of beauty, beautiful, healthy hormones. Beautiful, healthy skin is a reflection of a calm down, a standing down stress system, stress hormone system. Accelerated aging is an inside job, and what we put on our skin matters way less than what is happening in our bodies. Accelerated aging happens from the inside, and with the exception of vitamins A and C, and perhaps vitamin D, as well as hydroxy acids, alpha hydroxy acids, and beta hydroxy acids, salicylic acid, glycolic acid, lactic acid. With these exceptions, vitamins A, C, and the hydroxy acids, <clears throat> and perhaps vitamin D, there's very little you can do to create real changes in your skin with a, a standard cream or lotion. So I did my Truth Treatment products. Truth Treatment products are made with vitamin A and C and cholesterol. Ingredients that your skin can actually use. If you're using a standard skincare product, you're wasting your money for the most part. And the little, the superficial feeling that you get on the surface of the skin means nothing when it comes to skin health. Manufacturers are smart. They know that if you rub something on your skin and then you, then you rub your finger along the cream you just applied or the lotion you just applied and if it feels, you feel some wax or oil, you're gonna think you've done something. Manufacturers know that. Have you really done something? No. The only way you're gonna do something is by using vitamin A, vitamin C, perhaps vitamin D, and as well as uh, hydroxy acids and other few other um, uh, substances, including cholesterol. All right. Got more to say about the adrenal glands and skin health and the stress response. We'll do that when we come back from our break and take your phone call. Okay, we are back on the break side. I'm pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. Got, uh, got a full board here. As soon as somebody drops off, you can give us a call at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. Let's go to Nancy in Tennessee. What's going on? Welcome to the bright side, Nancy. Hi, Ben. Uh, hey. My grandbaby was born two weeks ago. Okay. And Congratulations. She, uh, yeah, healthy and everything, except, awesome. yeah. you know, they do these newborn screenings now. Okay. And her IRT level is high. Which Genet is genetic screenings you're talking about? Yeah, genetic screening, blood work. Okay. Um, she has an high IRT, which is um, okay. to indicate cystic fibrosis. Right. But she's only slightly elevated, so the state of Tennessee didn't really require any further testing, but it is something to watch. Okay. Here's what you need to do with this, and this is true about all... Uh, so-called genetic health issues when they do these genetic screenings, which are, which are pretty normal now, although not in all states. Uh, it varies by state to state. Uh, the uh, cystic fibrosis test, or the IRT levels, as you say, uh, that, indicate, uh, that indicate possible, possible uh, cystic fibrosis connection, 
what you want to do is you need to treat the baby kindly and gently and lovingly like you do with your body. This is so important when we have a potential health issue. You're not going to target cystic fibrosis, okay? But you can target the body and the body will target cystic fibrosis. You follow me? You work on the body, you let the body do the work. You work on the body, the body will take care of the health challenges. And that means, number one, for all babies, is she breastfeeding, by the way? She is, yes. Okay. Mom needs to make sure she's taking care of herself. The baby is being nourished and nutriated and detoxified via the activity, via the, uh, uh, the components that are in breast milk. That means if mom has food allergies, mom has digestive problems, mom's got toxins in her blood, usually it comes from food, but it could be from other things as well, baby's going to get them too. That will put a burden on the, on the baby's body. So making sure mom is eliminating any food allergens. That means if she does have dig history of digestive problems, doing a food diary, finding out what those food allergens are and food intolerances are, and eliminating those foods. Secondly, supporting mom's bacteria. Mom's microbiome, the microbiome is the fancy way of saying the universe of bacteria that lives in the intestines. Mom needs to support her microbiome. Baby's probiotics microbiome, which is going to have the major impact, the most important aspect of baby's development and health is going to be her gut bacteria. And baby's gut bacteria depends on, mom, on the breast milk, which depends on mom's gut bacteria. Mom needs to be supplementing with the Biolumin Nightly Essence, three in the morning, three in the afternoon, three at night. Mom needs to be using fermented foods wherever possible. Get a book called The Art of Fermentation. You can make your own fermented foods or buy sauerkraut. Make sure uh, the sauerkraut has live cultures in it. Same with yogurt and kefir and miso and tempeh and other fermented foods. Or she can make her own fermented foods using uh, generous amounts of fiber is very important for supporting gut bacteria. Using vegetables in general can be very helpful for gut bacteria. In addition to the fact that vegetables are gonna provide fiber, vegetables also provide raw materials for making things like short chain fatty acids that help support bacterial growth. Using apple cider vinegar can help after meals. Using digestive enzymes is also important. See, we're working here. We're working on mom's digestive health. If mom has any other health issues, such as autoimmune issues, those need to be addressed as well. Type one diabetes, for example, example, rheumatoid arthritis, whatever. Mom is healthy, I take it, correct? She's pretty healthy. She's going through some postpartum depression right now. Okay, so, so that, can affect, that can affect her biochemistry as well, and that can have an impact right. on baby. Guess what? If she's suffering from a biochemical depression, guess what's going to happen in the breast milk? There's going to be biochemical depressant chemicals in the breast milk. Guess who else is going to be suffering from depression? You follow me? So working on mom's biochemistry is key. Of course, the healthy star pack, that goes without saying. Make sure she's using her ultimate EFAs. Omega-3 fats are ridiculously important for baby's health. If I was uh, your mom, she should be supplementing with 50, 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate a day. Zinc is also very important for baby's development. Iodine is also very important for baby's de development. Get her on iodorol, have mom taking iodorol. Follow me, see how we're working here? Work on mom's digestive health, work on mom's nutritional supplementation, especially when it comes to, especially when it comes to iodine, zinc, and also uh, probiotics and good bacteria, and omega-3 fatty acids. You're not gonna target the cystic fibrosis in the baby, but what you could do is make baby healthy and strong and vital. And that, is, that will occur if she's breastfeeding through whatever mom is putting into her system, okay? Okay, what about selenium? Selenium is also okay. very, very important for mom, and then yes. it'll come out in the breast milk. The whole Mighty 90 yes. is very important, all of them. If, if you take selenium, do you need to make sure you not take it close to any other foods because no. it's bind, no. bind with... No, no, no. I mean, if you're if you're absolutely want to, you know, do every single last loophole cover uh, last loophole, perhaps selenium shouldn't be taken with fiber, uh, because fiber might tie up the selenium or phytates in fire, in uh, vegetables might lock it up. But for the most part, that's not much of an issue for most people. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Don't forget your vitamin C either. That's just your all around anti stress all right. vitamin. All right, I got to move. Thanks, Nancy. God bless you, you and congratulations. All right, Tanya in Oklahoma. What's going on? Or Toya. Toya, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, a friend of mine's son has sores on his scalp. Okay, Toya, I need you to speak into the phone, and if I'm on speaker, you got to get me off speaker because I can't hear you. Okay, I'm sorry. My voice is gone, so I'm going to okay. have someone talk for you just one second. Okay, go ahead, Toya. But a friend of mine's son has sores on his scalp. Sores on his scalp? 
Are you saying yeah. sores? And, okay. Okay. So, uh, all I'm hearing you say is sores in the scalp. Is it an older person, younger person? He's younger. Okay. Sores always mean an in, uh, the body is not healing itself. Chronic sores. I mean, if you have a sore from something some, some that rubbed on your skin, that's different. But chronic sores that don't heal means something is, is preventing the healing process from occurring. And there's one word that you got to know. It's called inflammation. Inflammation shuts down the healing process. Inflammation is a protective mechanism, but chronic long-term inflammation will slow down healing. Ironically, inflammation is actually important for healing, but chronic long-term over and over and over again inflammation will stop the healing process from occurring. When you have sores on the hands or on the scalp or on the skin somewhere, that typically means something is missing out of the, there's some kind of nutrient that's missing out of the diet especially vitamin E, especially zinc, and perhaps some omega fatty acids. Now, if there's a digestive issue, that will cause nutritional deficiencies too. There's two reasons why you have nutritional deficiencies. One is because they're not being absorbed, and one is because they're not being taken. So if there's any digestive issues, those need to be corrected, and they're very, they're very typical. Toya, nobody just has sores, so what you need to do is look for other health challenges that this person has. Usually it'll involve digestion, as I say, and sometimes there'll be a blood sugar component as well. Those are the two, two fundamental points of breakdown that substand or are underneath all symptomology, digestion and blood sugar. So first of all, you're going to correct the digestive issues if they're there, probiotics, good bacteria, food diary, eliminate problem foods. And then secondly, you're going to work with the blood sugar system, restricting your intake or, or the, this person's intake of fast-burning sugars, breads, pastas, rice, potatoes, fruit juice, desserts, you know, you know the drill. Then there's the supplements specific for healing. Zinc is probably the most important of all the healing nutrients, and zinc deficiency is very common, number one. And zinc absorption from the gut is very easily compromised, especially in the presence of lots of sugar. Zinc and sugar are mortal enemies. Zinc is involved in processing sugar, but as we bombard our bodies with sugar, zinc, deficiency, zinc deficiencies can occur quite easily. So this is another reason why to restrict your sugar intake, but using zinc supplements can help. Hang tight, Toya. I'll tell you what I mean when we come back from our break. Hey, we're back on the bright side. Thank you for joining us, talking to Toya in Oklahoma. Toya, are you there? Toya, Toya? Do we have Toya? Can you hear me? I hear you. Okay, good. So here's the deal with, with any kind of sores that don't heal. And by the way, sores that don't heal, whether on the scalp or the hands or the feet or the extremities, are always associated with other health issues. Nobody just has sores that don't heal. This involves inflammation and immunity, which compromises nutrient absorption. So first and foremost, you got to work on the absorption, and that means all your digestive strategies, eliminating problem foods, using the bioluminightly essence, using Jordan Rubin's wonderful Beyond Organic products, including the Swear V, doing a Swear V cleanse, anything you could do to support digestive health. I know it's, it's not something you're going to think about because it's, you know, what do sores have to do with digestion after all? Everything. No absorption of nutrients, inflammatory factors getting into the blood. These all result from digestive health issues that need to be corrected. Step number two, if there's any blood sugar problems, we know that diabetes is associated with sores that don't heal and all kinds of skin conditions, especially in the lower extremities or in the extremities. That means if there's blood sugar issues, those need to be addressed, eliminating problem foods and then using nutrients that help support the blood sugar system. Get your friend on the Healthy Star Pack. That goes without saying. And make sure they're using essential fatty acids. The ultimate EFA is very, very important for skin health. Then there's all, all kinds of very specific nutrients for healing. Zinc is your superstar skin healing nutrient. Zinc is actually stored in the skin. Zinc stimulates collagen production. When you have a cut, zinc travels to the area where you have a cut. When you have a burn or any kind of wound, zinc migrates to that wound to accelerate healing and speed up the production of fibers. Hang on just one second, Toya. Make sure you're using 50, or have your friend or whoever it was, your son, using 50 milligrams of zinc pick eight a day. And then in addition, there's some other miscellaneous nutrients that can help you with skin healing. Vitamin E, 400 international units a day. Vitamin D, best way to get your vitamin D is from the sun. So making sure whoever this is is getting a little bit of sunshine. And then uh, 
a couple other just throw-ins here that, that uh, they're not essential nutrients, but alpha lipoic acid has some wonderful benefits for the skin, 400 international units a day. NAC can be helpful for the skin as well, NAC they call it, 500 milligrams a day. And you might want to throw in the ultimate selenium, uh, 400 to 600 micrograms a day. Topically, you can use zinc oxide, wonderful for healing, and nothing beats lipophilic 